Hypocrisy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota that many people like to claim does not exist, but it does in our hearts, in our minds, and in our pants. With me today is a very good friend who has a rare opportunity to be up late with me, which I love, Mr. Steve Gosney. How's it going, man? Awesome, man. I, I just had dinner with my son. We had sushi. And nice. so I've been on a cloud all day. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I was, dude, I've had a great day today too, in a similar fashion. Um, we had a, uh, our homeschool co-op had a field trip today um, where we, uh, whoever wanted to, the homeschool co-op field trips are great. They're completely optional, right? Like there's uh, whatever. And we went to a roller rink. Uh, so we took we took the kids, uh, all five of the little rugrats, Lady Rackets and I, and we went up to the roller rink and took them roller skating. And I don't know about you, Steve, but I love roller skating. Really? Yes. Well, on on the quads, I, not on, not this inline skate no. bullshit. No. See, I, I'm not a, I'm not a skater. I, I would. I, the thing is, is the idea of it is cool, but I'm so clumsy. I'm like on the bottom percentages of clumsy, and so. I would just, I, it would be dangerous to my survival to go too much skating or ice skating or skiing or any of that stuff. Oh man, I, I love it. Lady Raggets and I, we used to, um, when we lived, after we got out of college and we moved back to the Twin Cities, we lived where I went to high school um, in this town called Lakeville. And just north of there is a town called Burnsville. Mm -hmm. And Burnsville has uh, this roller rink called Skateville. And um Vills, lots of vills everywhere. Everything's a vill. I don't know. But uh, we used to go there all the time. Like we would go to the open skates and we just skate together and have a blast <laughs> doing that. And then as we got uh, our first son was born, we still lived there. Um, we would roller skate around, just push him around the stroller. But then we moved away from there and there's not a roller rink with it. It's like an hour away from our house. And, uh, and so we went less and less and less with the kids. So we didn't get to go as much, but man, we used to skate all the time. And so when we go, I love it because I get to, I get to skate around with lady rackets. And, um, although I barely got to skate with her today cause she's chasing the kids everywhere, but I got, I skated for like three hours. I just skate around. I don't do anything crazy. <laughs> I just skate around and it's, it's like, it's peace, man. I, I just, it's a, it's a nice relaxing activity. And I got to watch, um, Two of my kids go from skating with those stupid like PVC wedges with the casters on them that help them stand while they skate. This is a new thing. If you haven't been to a skating rink in a while, no, I, okay. in a while, and it was like <laughs> junior high school because <laughs> I was in the seventies. We had you know, right, little, you know, Fox on the run. We do skating. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's when roller rinks were like big, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but no, so now what they have for these little kids is they make these PVC like it's it's like a like a corner, right? A PVC thing, and it, they're about three feet tall, and uh, they have casters on the bottom, so the kids can hold on to those while they skate around, if so they don't fall, like the little ones. Oh, so it's like uh, one of the it's like one of the old people. It's like a walker, thing has, yeah. yeah, walker for okay. Right. And so like uh, a couple of my like younger kids had those at the start. And then by the end of the day, they're just skating around without them. And I was like, yes, this is awesome. This is how it's supposed to go. We had to we had to earn our dues with blood and sweat and falling all over the place. People making fun of us. But uh, no, it was a good time, man. I and then uh, I took uh, we took the whole family out to one of those hibachi restaurants. Mm hmm. Where they cook at the table, and light the oh, whole yeah, table on yeah. fire. Yeah, that's great. I love those restaurants. No, I, well, we actually ate sushi. I love that we have a sushi restaurant here that's locals only, <laughs> and, and it, it's the best. And we go, mm -hmm. we go there, and it's. I just had such a good time. He's at college, and so getting my son time. You know, my wife's out of town, so I've been post. Basically, I've been occupying myself by posting on Rumble, doing Rumble, <laughs> nice, and doing like no, chats. it's great. People yeah, have been nice, you know, it's really, people are nice. And, and, um, and so I get to, you know, I just said, keep me company and they have, so it's real nice. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the best time. Like 
it's it's weird to say that, but like when you're when your spouse is out and you have this like chunk of time, it's like okay, I can sit down and do some stuff and and get stuff done, uh, and that, that's a great time to do it. But um, it's it's really good in my opinion when you get to spend it with uh, like with your kid or with with family or like a good friend catch up on something. That's uh, that's so 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 much fun, so valuable, and that brings me to something I want to do right before we actually get started because. Um, in this, in the chat that I had, uh, open earlier today, there was a, there was a tip. I was, I was not in the chat, but, um, there was a, a, a locals tip from someone and I want to read it because I know that, uh, that as a man of faith and character that you'll, you'll appreciate this one. It, it appreciates a weird, weird word, but, uh, here we go. This is from Nene is me it says, hello, Ricada law. We have watched you for a couple years now. I've taken over my wife's account as she passed away in January at 43 of cancer. Uh, I wanted to let you know we enjoyed so much time together with you, watching trials and learning with you. She never would ask, but would you sell the I'm not a cat painting? Um, Nene is me. Please, if you see this, please, please, please email me. Uh, I just want to say thank you. I will always have great memories of... Uh, of us laughing along and learning through some wild trials. Take care and hug your loved ones. So I figure in theme of you getting to spend time with your son uh, and me getting to spend some good family time, it was a nice reminder that uh, life can be very fleeting and um, and that you should take those opportunities to do that, y'all. Well, and the, and this is the thing. I mean, you have um, – oh, well, I talk <laughs> – the thing, the problem with writing a new book like I did, we'll get to that a little bit, is that mm -hmm. all of my stories are kind of contained there. So I'm like, it's in my book, you know, because right. it, it really relates to this. But but um, you don't realize how connected you are with people until they aren't there. And yes. so, you know, try to be aware, try to become conscious of of that now so that you don't have regrets and you don't say like oh well i could have uh, i could have done this or i would have done that right like just like i mean having time with my son and uh, obviously you pray that your children will get wings that's the ultimate validation as a parent is that you have let them into the world and they they've done you've done your job and they're happy and they live a great life and they're but they're free they're not they're not living in your home for the rest you hope to free them but then you get the whole empty nester thing, which is what I've got because my I'm, I've got the empty nest, and so I had to kind of realign my values, and that's a that's a challenge too. Is coming up with a new right. a new purpose in life, and um and so I'll always be dad, but I you know there's no child around to be dad with, and no you know I can't take him to Disney, and I can't read a book, and I can't you know he's out, he's doing his college thing, and he's doing great, and I'm happy for that, but. But now what, right? So I've had to, I've really, this last year has been a major year for me as far as realigning my values and and readjusting my goals in life. And so that's that's what I've done. And I've, you know, plunged into this whole thing, writing books and, and trying to expand what you give to the world, larger world, right? Than, than just your, your family unit. But um, you're, you've got, what's the, how is your, your oldest, what's your age range for your oldest to the youngest? Um, it's, uh, 15 down to five and real quick, I want to, I want to say something guys. Um, I didn't read, I didn't read that one to bring down the stream. Um, I, I actually, uh, it, it is a, tra it's a tragic, uh, post and I get these sometimes. Um, but, uh, it was actually more intended to be encouraging. Well, uh, because absolutely. And this is that you, you appreciate. Now, I, I don't think it came across as a downer. It came across as a very serious um, side of you. And it's it's fascinating, you know, and I'm, I'm really, you know, getting into this whole Internet, whatever it is, is like my my other life. I was talking about like I've got my my life, which is I'm working and I, I go to work and I do my cases and I deal with clients and I deal with families of clients and I deal with all the attorneys and the training and answer questions. And I've got this, my, you know, my career and my life. And, I go, and then I've got this whole other thing that's been pretty new. And I'm like, what is that thing? Right. I mean, I don't know, but it's interesting getting to know you is that you have this, 
night stream thing, <laughs> which is like <laughs> you have the 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 Drex or the, uh, the what is the the Camelot? Because I actually watched Camelot for the first time Wasn't yesterday. It fun. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I, can oh, see I that. love that show. I love that yeah, guy's I know. show you're, so you're, much. Uh, but it's it's a whole different thing than like where usually I'm haunting the daytime streams and doing things like with uh, with Andrew Bronco or Legal Vices or something. Usually Andrew's Andrew and I are pretty close and and so, but it's a it's a whole different thing, you know. But it doesn't like okay, you are that or are you this or are you that. I mean, you can be all of those things. You know, you're we're complicated people and we have many facets to us. And so people, you know, people look at Nick and they have a perspective. <laughs> but I like the fact that you have different sides and and I do too, but I tend to I think I'm better on maybe the day stream side. A lot of well, see so you like to not. No, because what you're doing right now is um you're doing something that's very, very tempting to do. And it is to it is to ascribe a value system to a perception or facet of yourself, but those values are subjective temporally. They're subjective in place. They're subjective in subject matter, because uh, your your daytime stuff is absurdly valuable. You have this wonderful career, a wealth of experience. You've seen everything in the world, written about it, researched it. Uh, as far as the law goes. And that's all fantastic. But I love nighttime Steve because you're hilarious. Well, you're genuine. Uh, and you you can you can pop from like a, a joke or or like a subject of levity or seriousness. And then and then you can you can really interject something that's of value in a completely different way uh, with with your more personal um, sort of faith interjections or your life experience interjections. And look, uh, we we talked um, we had that nice meal in uh, Miami when I got to meet you and your wife in person and like your life experience and your story of her is such a unique and interesting thing that most people don't have. And, and so uh, I, I don't like personally when people go, well, this side, I feel like this side of myself is more valuable. Well, no, well in I'm, context, I, I'm not it saying it, I'm not saying it's more valuable. I'm, I'm saying that we have a lot of different sides and, and it's easy to judge like something that, there, there's, I think that that makes you a complete human being that you've yeah. got different, you've got different interests. Like thing, there's a lot of stuff that, I mean, I talk about, I'm very open and I, I don't ever get offended by anything. So I don't mind, you know, your nighttime streams or your nighttime chats or your directs and your Camelot strat. I mean, it doesn't offend me. And, but you know, what am I interested in? I don't know. Like that, that Camelot stream you did last night, I guess it was, was I thought was really good. And um, but there's other things like I don't ever ever get to talk about history, and I, I've got to figure out how to kind of work that in somewhere because, I mean, my whole life I've studied history. I'm very much an interested in history uh, subjects, mainly American military history and World War II. That's my main uh, area of focus. And it's really easy. You just talk about it, right? I get it, but but <laughs> people. I don't know. I mean, like, what are they interested in? Are they interested in the law stuff? Are they interested? I like, I love music. Everybody knows that. Ah, see, and I, I will coach you. I will coach you, my young coach apprentice. You. Um, people <laughs> are interested in what you're interested in. And they're well, not, in, enough, yeah. they're not interested in what you force yourself to talk about. And that is, um, that is something that I, look, I'm a giver, Steve. You're and giver. during this Johnny, <laughs> during the Johnny Depp nonsense, there was um, there were a bunch of new people kind of popping up in this legal YouTube commentary area, and uh, and I I tried I tried my damnedest multiple times to impart uh, my hard earned wisdom and experience in this in this field, and I said <laughs> I said it on um, this one show I did. There was some drama. And uh, I addressed the drama, but I also talked about this, this other portion of, I think it was the same show. And I said, it's going to be really interesting when the Johnny Depp trial is over and sort of the fervor around it fades out, which took, it took a couple months for it to really like uh, drop off. And there, there's some little spikes of it. People like that umbrella guy who had been covering it for the two years prior, he could keep it going a lot longer than everybody else. And I said, when the subject is gone, a lot of these people are going to be lost on what mm. to do 
because they haven't developed themselves oh, as a brand. That's what they interesting. Have, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good, very good observation, actually. Yes. Yeah. Because well, I only it, know this because I had to do it from the from the start because the, the start of my show is about this lawsuit involving two internet retards fighting each other and uh i love i love one of them a lot and the other one i i used to love a lot and i still would if you if you would just stop being so weird but um it, once their lawsuit ended like i had to talk about everything else so i'm doing like hour-long videos on marbury versus madison and why it's a trash decision and stuff like that <laughs> and getting really no views on those things and having to learn to build into me. But what, what I learned really quickly is you cannot chase what other people want to see from you because you're going to hate doing it. Well, um, yeah. And uh, actually, I mean, in all honesty, that's all good advice. And, and I'm sort of following that path. It's just that I'm doing this because I'm, I'm getting on this stuff because it's fun. And I'm kind of putting rules down myself is that I try not to come on and appear on stuff unless I have something genuinely worthwhile to contribute. Um, otherwise, I'm not just going to come in and say like, hey, look at me, you know, buy my book, even though you should buy my book. Uh, but, the, but the fact is, is I try to add something to, to whatever I go on. And if, if I'm not like, if I don't really have knowledge or something special that I have to add, I try not to go on and, and just, just be there. Occasionally it's fun. Like, you know, I'll go on the party streams or the Griff stream or whatever it is. Um, but I mean, maybe I have something to have. I don't know. I'm I'm just not going in and saying, "Oh, I've got I've got to get my content out." So what am I going to do today? And look around. I mean, I'm not anything like that. It's like, look, I'd rather just not do it. We need so, to have we need to have a long discussion about this off stream, though, because people people don't want to hear about this, which is running contrary to what I just said. But that's okay. We're gonna get into some. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into some legal subjects today. Um, we're going to get into, I think we're going to talk a little bit about prepare and we'll probably just drift around. Um, but I've got two major subjects that I'm, I'm really actually excited because I wanted to talk to you about both of these. Sure. And one of them, on let's go. One of them will be dipping back in the well of content a little bit, guys. I, I've covered it pretty extensively, but I wanted Steve's, uh, perspective on this as a criminal defense attorney, even though he's not in the same jurisdiction. Uh, I want to talk about the prosecution of Donald Trump. Um, okay, I, sure. I do want to do that. And then the other thing we're going to be talking about is there are news story after news story right now going after Clarence Thomas. I know Steve has talked, uh, you, you've met him, right? You met. Oh, Clarence I've met Thomas? him twice. And I'm, um, I would say when I was at law school, I was friends with his son and, right. uh, you know, his, and his basically my very close friend, Chris and, and Clarence Thomas's son, uh, we used to have, we used to have dinner and steak together um i don't i don't want to you know dox him or anything like that no, no, but no. but but he and his now wife are beautiful people they're very nice like and, marilyn uh, manson said the beautiful and, people, and so he's beautiful he's, people. no no he, he's a really a funny guy and his wife is great they're a really cute couple and so we'd have we'd have steaks we'd, we'd have grilled my my friend chris was really good at grilling steaks and so it'd be like me chris and jamal and his now wife and and we'd hang out and we'd just you know have fun you know and he, he's he so we've hung out multiple times and and i actually we went to it i stayed so i sp actually spent the a night at his house once because when we went and see a nascar race in you know i think it was in richmond um and so we went did a trek and i got to hang out with uh it's jamal jamal thomas is his name and mm -hmm. we used to hang out in his house and and just, you know, but he's just a genuine guy and I'm still Facebook friends with him. You know, I know it, but he's a very popular guy. So I'm just, who am I? But, and so. You got to get I, him on his show, man. Well, you know, he's, 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 I don't know. Oh, like my I gosh. said, well, playing on celebrity like that. I don't know. What is that? And, and the thing is, no, I gotta, it's not be, playing on celebrity. You. So, oh gosh, and I got to be careful. Well, let me just listen because okay, you okay. know I, I, I'm a ma major fanboy of his dad, right? I think his dad is the best justice on the Supreme Court, I, and I've met him a couple times. He's made a big impact on me. Just the 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 things that he's told me stay with have stayed with me to this day, and I, I've really and I've reflected on them. And he's he's made a lot of power powerful uh, statements to me. Just a couple times I met him. You know, it's not like Right. I, and and um, Justice Chief Justice Rehnquist spoke at our, our graduation 
And uh, I don't remember anything he said. <laughs> so, so, right. So, I mean, and I've, I've got a, you know, his book and I've re researched him and I have a lot of, I have a lot of respect for Clarence Thomas. So I don't know where, why, what was the beginning? What was the question? <laughs> no, here, here's the thing. I, I'm, I'm saying that you should, you should interview as a friend, Jamal Thomas, because, uh, and, and the reason is not to lean on celebrity or anything like that. It's which if you're thinking like that, you're thinking wrong. Here's the deal. You have access to someone with a life experience that is, I mean, who gets to be raised by a Supreme Court justice? The number of people on earth that qualify for that are so low because the liberals don't even like kids. So you're really only talking about conservative. That's a joke, Steve. That's a joke. Okay, well, no, I'm, <laughs> no, no but, I don't, you know, I'm not. I know, but I'm, I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. uh, you, you can, uh, this is your friend, and you can get stories out of him that would be magical. And, see, and But see, this is the thing. I mean, am I his friend now? you know, I, he's an acquaintance. I, I, I have, I'm within a circle and, you know, it's like, I, I would feel goofy saying, Hey, you know, Jamal, I'm going to throttle channel. you. Is he a oh, lawyer? Is he no, a lawyer? No, but he went to law school. No, he went to VMI. Oh. In fact, do you remember the VMI case where they let women into VMI and Clarence? What the hell's VMI? Virginia military Institute. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. 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 And so Washington and Lee and VMI are a butt they're, they're, the schools couldn't be more different, but the campuses are right next to each other. And gotcha. it's it's a fascinating thing. And his wife went to went to Washington and Lee. And um, so and my friend Chris went to VMI with Jamal. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just I, I just don't feel comfortable. I understand what you're saying, but. It's not my place. Send him to, to me. That. I'm comfortable. Well, I no. know, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, Wait, Jamal, uh... if Jamal's a fanboy, I'll put you call me. I'll get you in touch with Nick. How's that? Is that fair? Hell All yeah. right. Because he's got my Facebook. He knows me. He could Facebook me and and I will I will put him in touch, but I'm not going to do that. I bet Jamal's watching on Rumble uh, here real quick. Um, as we get started on this, uh, Mandy, my resident favorite artist in my uh, locals, has drawn you. She draws my guests all the time, and me, usually in disparaging ways. Drawn for me, me or drawn you? She drew you. She drew me? Look at you. <laughs> there we go. Heavy metal attorney Steven Gosney. I don't I know. Is, is that my hair color? No, it's not your hair color, but it works <laughs> for the... I like the, I like the devil horns, though. Art critic Steve here. Oh my god! No, no, it's awesome. <laughs> Very good. Okay, let me read. Uh, we have just a couple chats to get started, and then we'll we'll jump into this Clarence Thomas topic first, sure. since we're talking about him, and then we'll we'll get into the Trump thing. But we are free to ping around. Oh, uh, pre announcement, guys. Um, locals has scheduled maintenance tonight at 3 p.m. Eastern, which is two or 3 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Central time. So it looks like I will not be doing a locals uh, live stream tonight, most likely, because it will be down. Um, I will, I believe, uh, I believe tomorrow Lady Rackets actually has something to do for most of the evening. So I'm probably going to be uh, available for something unconventional. We'll, we'll make something happen tomorrow. That'll be fun. Um, and yes, uh, I did live through last night's local stream. Um, it was my first cigar after the winter. I, I didn't smoke any cigars over the winter and I kicked my butt. Uh, so that was, that was great, but I'm proud to say I did not vomit, even though I really, really wanted to. Um, oh my gosh. Do you, do you do cigars, Steve? Once about every 10 years, if the, if the moment strikes, you know, it, it has to, the, the, the stars have to be in alignment. They're actually, I, I was surprised how powerful they are. Yeah. You know, and I, I didn't That's realize. Um, so I was, I was in my hot tub, which was also the first time in like two months I've been in my hot tub because I, I was able to get it uh long story. I'm going to ignore it. My hot tub got nice and clean. I was like, Oh, I'll do a hot tub stream. I'll smoke a cigar. I was getting really hot and I was like, I got to get out of this thing. And then I'm smoking the cigar, trying to get through it. And I was just like pounding this thing down. I was not taking my time, which is a mistake. And, uh, and people are like, are you okay? I'm like, Nope, I gotta go. <laughs> so, uh, it was not great. Okay. Uh, true and true and a bad pressure, bad cafe care says, Hey, why don't you try saying my name? Right. Just cause I would rather given locals. You forget me. Locals chat is best chat. Locals chat is best chat. And I, I love your, I love your YouTube name. Thank you. Uh, Mega Mobass says, sorry in advance, Steve. 
So Steve is talking about Justice Thomas like he was trying to convince Danny to show off her pocket constitutions. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Looking at you, Alyssa Clips, for reference. <laughs> that was great. That was that was a great moment. Do you know what she's talking about? No, no. So wait, I have one of those pocket constitutions. No, but that's that's not the point. <laughs> I gathered it wasn't the point, but what? Well, you should look the, that up. Look, the, go up. What is it, Alyssa? What's it, Elizabeth? Alyssa Law clips. Oh, she yeah. did she clip this thing? Yeah, she clipped that. That's it's short and worthwhile. That's <laughs> what I tell all my dates. Yes, that was. Uh, you see, this is the thing. People think that I'm so pure, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm not. I'm genuine. Let's I, see. I, I uh, am not Danny, sure. Danny has many pockets. This one. Okay. Uh, let me, <laughs> let me pull definitely. this up. Alyssa, please don't strike me for using your content. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, she's, she's pulling your content out. <laughs> what is that? It was a joke. It was a okay, joke. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Like I play devil's advocate. People don't understand. Like I freaking love this document. This right here. Like, see Danny, Danny, jump, when she gets out of her seat. Oh yeah. Oh, you've got the pocket constitution, man. I have like eight. Okay, because I keep exactly. writing in them. So you guys, by the How way, this is from the Cato have? Institute. We almost got to see the backside of Danny for her backside pocket. Oh, God. Oh, my backside is not very attractive in these pants. But look, <laughs> see, I have I have these other con Wait. federal society. These right, I know. Nine. I've got one. I have one. You've got eight. But you you outbid me on the uh, scale of federalist society people. You're well, on fire. Keep going, man. These are great because you can actually write notes in them in the can margins. You go put that and, back up on the shelf. Oh, come on, Steve! And put it on the top shelf <laughs> right about the center of your chair. I go should, ahead, put I it back should. up there. Now lift, right. lift the right. Okay, that's good. And move over a little bit further to the left. This way. No, a little further. A little you further should tell her to put it on the next shelf. Next, yeah, oh, all the way God. on the top. Oh, up here. Yeah, up, <laughs> move over to a, one, like one step to the left. <laughs> yeah, right, right there. Okay, now move up and put it on the top shelf. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, right. Okay, you got it. See, I do my service. I'm telling you. <laughs> see, there. Great. That was a great. Um... <laughs> Steve's over here. He's like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I add value to the day shows, but the night shows. <laughs> you see, there. The I, I deliver for my people. I just want you to know. You see, there. I look out for you all, and I'm here for you. That's it. I'm just saying. <laughs> that was that was fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Uh, it was, <laughs> you know, we want to know, don't you think? We want to know these things. This is the thing. We want the full picture. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Danny is lovely. I love her. She's great. Yeah. Uh, Kara Mache says, uh, Carrie Mache says, rackets. It looks like your neck was giant when you were doing naked snake last night. Was it full of cum? Chat said it was. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, as always, uh, and Aowen Faramir says, "Hey Nick, I'm or hi Nick. I'm currently suffering my first miscarriage. Oof. And like See you, there. just send blessings you can on the little life. I cannot stop losing five weeks, but well, five weeks is a lot more than none. No, no, don't ever minimize the the time on that. Look, we had we had three of them ourselves, and um, we remember." Uh, we remember all of them forever. We've memorialized them in our own way as well. Um, they are, you know, I, I actually did a live stream on on this topic because it does not get talked enough about. Um, I have this lady named Dr. Rebecca Peck, and you can look back on my Rumble channel. And I did an interview with Dr. Peck. She's a medical doctor who has an amazing story of life affirmation, and she suffered a miscarriage. And she, I, I asked, well, actually, I, I, I'm sorry. I asked her about a friend of mine who had a, and she, she talked about it from a very mm -hmm. um, moving perspective. So if you want to, I would highly recommend that, that stream, if you guys want to look back at, so if you have, if you're suffering a miscarriage, it's something that we don't talk about, you know, it doesn't get talked no. about. And it's it's uh, as as a newly married couple when we had our our first one and then the subsequent two before we had any kids we had three right in a row bam bam bam, and um, they don't no one talks to you about it in advance but when it comes up they're like oh yeah and you start looking into it and you're like wow like something like fifty percent of pregnancies end in miscarriage it's mm. um, most of the time people don't know because it's like this one was at five weeks so. You only kind of find out if you're looking for a pregnancy. Um, but when you are, that, of course, is when it hits even harder. <laughs> like if you're trying to get pregnant and you're you're testing early and you're watching all the signs 
and then you you find out you are pregnant and lose one it 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 can be really really tough um look uh it, it is tough but but you know that it's it's part of i hate to say it's part of the cycle but things will improve be encouraged don't be discouraged um and and appreciate that short moment that you had uh with that with that child because um even though the world didn't get to meet it you did and uh and that's something very special mac mccormick says nick will you toast my friend john who passed suddenly over the weekend oh my gosh boy we a serious channel today this is uh, tough it's happening. We're going to have to make a bunch of penis jokes to make up for this. He was a great guy and leaves behind three sons in their 20s to pick up the pieces. His family has set up a GoFundMe to help. We'll share the link in the comments. You won't be able to, my friend, because uh, you can't share links on YouTube. Um, but maybe if you could communicate with um, one of the mods in chat, Zeno or C. Goody might be in there. Uh, maybe they can post the well, links How are the weights is here on uh is Valha- did I make the mistake of making Valhalla Awaits a mod? <laughs> Why is he one of a mod? <laughs> no, he's, he's great. No, he's, he's great. I'm just, I'm, I'm just razzing him. Uh, okay, Jay, yeah. Jay Liebgott and and Valhalla Awaits. Maybe they could uh, suss out that GoFundMe link. Jason share McConnell, it. Jay Liebgott, Jay Liebgott, yeah, and Jason McConnell as well. Um, anyway, um, Mac, to your friend John, uh, who passed over the weekend, um, a great guy leaving behind three sons in their twenties. Uh, let's let's just acknowledge the fact that he got three boys to their 20s uh, without killing them or having someone else do it. And that is a that is an accomplishment in and of itself. And we know um, that they will be carrying on the legacy of John. Uh, I, I would not say they're picking up the pieces. I would not. Well, there, there's no, you know, this is the thing. It's like, you've got to. Steve, I'm it, in the middle of a toast. You can wait. Just oh, were you? I'm yes. sorry. I thought that was it. <laughs> no, he, uh, this never it. It's never it. I would say they're. <laughs> they're not picking up the pieces, my friend. They're putting new blinds, new doors, and new windows on the house that he built, on the foundation that he set. May they continue to grow in that house, to expand it, and to eventually bring children of their own into it. Cheers. Cheers. Now you have permission to speak. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, that's, I feel like I'm in the Florida Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I yes, yeah, boy, you know, there's this funny because that um, that uh, there's this clip because I'm in my oral argument in the uh, Jaquel Davis case, and it you know it got buried a long time ago, and it's it's really a good example of interruption, right? And and I you know I know that people like everybody's pounded on because I interrupt. Okay, I, I understand that. That's my nature. I can't help it. It but doesn't you, bother me at all. <laughs> okay, good. Well, it bothers your your chatters, right? But but when you're at the Supreme Court, you know, anytime a justice speaks, you have to immediately shut down. Well, they were firing questions at me like left and right, and I couldn't get half a sentence out. And I, there was it was a very important case, and now this case is getting circulated around the web because I guess people are searching for me and like oral arguments. Mm-hmm. And and this case, I, I really want Jeff at, at Legal Vices to do it. He did this like Gosney thing that I my one of my oral arguments. And um he needs to do this one because the, the briefing in that case is so much better than the oral argument. The oral argument, I'm constantly being interrupted. I can't say anything. And it's like and people would like, what was that case even about? Right? I don't know. Um what was the case about? Or can well, you wait? You yes. might not want to talk about it too much, sure. Well, I can talk about it some. It, it was, um, I well, it was the question is in that case, either I'll go, the question is it, immediately I'm in oral argument mode. Yeah. When does speedy trial get triggered? It gets Ooh, triggered upon arrest. Right. Okay. Well, what is arrest? Arrest is getting handcuffs put on, put in the back of the patrol car, book them, Dano, right? But is there such a thing as a de facto arrest? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and so this is the thing. We all agree that if you get booked and you get your picture shot and they file a police report, you're under arrest. Well, what if that's a de jure arrest though, because that has set, uh, we have requirements in law that we say, these are the requirements that lead to arrest. So that is a de jure arrest, which means under the law, a de facto arrest would mean, well, under this set of facts, we have an arrest, even though it might not fulfill the normal categories that we would need to make it uh, to to consider it a de jure arrest, right? Like, or, right. am I on okay, for so you? You're right. Now, so so let me pass a fact pattern back, pass you to see if this is a de facto arrest. 
um, cops come to a house. There's, 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 they come in from a robbery and they track this car from the robbery to this house. And they they have suspects. Well, they come into the house mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of people in the house and they, they pull the two people out that, that they're suspecting of the robbery. And, um, and there's like few other people in there. Well, the other people, they put in handcuffs, take them out of the king, put them in the police car, drive them to the police station, put them in a room and interrogate them for eight hours and then say, okay, you're free to leave. You're not under arrest. <laughs> well, they were though. Oh, were they? Not well, according to the Florida Supreme Court and Davis because they didn't formally arrest him. Which is insane because if we're looking at this from a Fourth Amendment perspective, right? They have been seized and are under arrest for the purposes of the Fourth Amendment. At that point, the moment you are not free to leave is a, is the uh, the Supreme Court standard. The moment a reasonable person would expect that they are not free to leave, they are under arrest uh, for the purposes of Fourth Amendment analysis. And it's interesting. But what though, about for the purposes of speedy trial? Right. That's and that's that that trick is that little phrase for the purposes of fourth amendment analysis. But the question is if that continues, uh, wait, so wait, how does that, how does speedy trial factor into that? If they, so they weren't under arrest, then they were then re arrested later is what you're saying. Right. So then so how much go later? With a year and a half. Oh my God. So yes. then, yeah, we, you, so then you what, would say what happens days. Is, yeah. So then we, we have, as we have these, um, past, let's just say, past the statute of limitations or past the speedy trial rule because and so of course we can't let anybody get away with anything so what happens is the prosecutor prosecutes these people and at the plea hearing they say hey we'll give you a better deal if you rat out all your co-compatriots oh well let me tell you who else was involved my buddy here right and the guy's like what are you talking about so they they the, at their plea they, they give him a deal and then they throw the buddy under the bus right and then and now now they say, well, now we're rearresting you. And he says, wait a second. You know, you already arrested me and speedy trials run. Right. Because speedy trial is 60 days, right? Like well, on a felony, it's longer. But th let's just say for the purposes of this this argument, longer than the speedy trial rule allows. Right. Man, that's uh I had not thought of that scenario. Like that fact scenario did not, you know, occur to me because. You know, I just don't run into that. Uh, well, but... and, and it's kind of an obscure rule. In Florida, there's this old case called, I think it's Melton. Boy, if I if I got that right, I'll be kicking. <laughs> I mean, but I'm pretty sure it's the Melton. And it's got a bunch of factors. And see, I'm a big fan. One thing about writing is that you, you learn about yourself and what you believe. Mm -hmm. uh, because it forces you to refine your thoughts in a way that is, is uh, coherent. <laughs> Because you can allow for sloppy and incoherent thoughts when you're just talking because verbal interaction is a lot less specific. But one thing I found is that I'm very much a fan of objective tests. And the Melton test adds a lot of subjectivity into the whole equation. And so it goes back to, well, the cops didn't intend to arrest him. So you have five Melton factors. And one of them is the intent of the cop. And the cops come in and say, well, we didn't intend to arrest him. And so that that defeats speedy trial. So based on a technicality, the guy gets goes down. Right. Um, there's a there's a comment in locals which I want to address. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but it says uh, the January Sixers have been in jail for over two years without trial. Now right. I am going to suggest that I I would wager they waived speedy trial on many of those, uh, probably all of the people who remained in jail um, without trial probably waived their speedy trial right um, at one of their preliminary hearings. And it's a very, very common thing for people to do. And one of the reasons why you might have waived two years ago your right to a speedy trial on the January 6th stuff is because you are waiting for all of the video and, and the evidence to come out to be available for you on discovery. If you were a peaceful entrant in January 6th who didn't participate in any, in any hitting of cops or anything like that, it would be beneficial to you, in theory, to have access to surveillance videos, cell phone videos, and things that might come up in other people's trials. Now, what they wouldn't have expected is a two-year wait, but once you waive that speedy trial, 
I don't know that there's a way to reclaim it. Are you aware of any way to reassert speedy trial privilege after waiving it? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Well, and I will speak as a Florida lawyer. And in Florida, there are basically, well, there's, there's, speedy trial is extremely complicated. But I'll just say, first of all, it's almost a useless right, which is the way the Supreme Court, we have whittled away our rights so much that we don't have any. But there's two. There's speedy trial without waiver and there's speedy trial with waiver. So when, what happens is when you continue a case, you are, it's a, it's deemed a, it's, you are not ready for trial. It is deemed a waiver of speedy trial. So that once you have a waiver that cuts off the tolling of the speedy trial statute, you can then reassert it once you are ready for trial. What it really is, is a tool for the defense attorney to force a trial. Mm -hmm. It is generally not used as a discharge. So example, like what I was seeking at the Joquel Davis case would be if we were successful, the guy would have walked away, not guilty because they they had because he had not waived his speedy trial because he right. was never he was arrested and not charged and it ran during that time. Okay, well, the, just judges hate that because they don't want anybody to get away with any crime ever because that would be horrible. So right. so they um, but what if if you're arrested? And you don't waive, then there's a that statutory period runs. But if you do waive, you can reinvoke it by simply invoking speedy trial. And there's another process for that. There's also constitutional speedy trial, which is extremely complicated. So let's not get into that. Oh, look, Mark of Orion. There it is. Yeah. See, that was, he brought a good. He says melting. it shows as being overruled. Uh, Melton versus State overruled by Davis versus State. Well, Davis is my case. That's my. That's wait. Florida, that's Florida, that's the wrong citation. The uh, District Court of Appeal, the Davis v. State, that's my case, but it that's the fifth DCA, but it was the Supreme Court took that case up and I orally argued that, and this is where they came out and did not, I don't believe they, they came up with a different set of rules, which is BS. They basically said there is no such thing as de facto arrest. It's only de jure arrest. It's only when they book you and the cops actually formally arrest you. That's what they said, which is garbage. I'd see, I guess I'm talking more about it than what I should, Maybe but should I will start. say, I will say that <laughs> I'll say it's garbage. I think that's terrible. I think we have a standard for determining arrest. And if the cops make that arrest related to that specific crime, which clearly in this case it was, then they have 60 days to charge or whatever the rule is uh, for speedy trial, uh, that they have that amount of time to charge. And if they don't charge at that point, then I'm sorry, you made the arrest you let them go. We can't leave a sword of Damocles hanging over people's heads and expect them to function in a polite and, 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 and functional society. Uh, and it's it's ridiculous to think that, um, that God, I, I have... I have people asking me questions about this all the time, only the difference for them is they have not been in any sense arrested, but they'll get a phone call or a letter and they'll say, hey, we want to talk to you about this thing. And they're like, how long uh, do I have to you know, worry about this? And I'm like, well, until the statute of limitations. I mean, it right. could be two years. It could be six years, depending on what you. Well, and in murder, there is no them. statute of limitations. Well, people and, aren't calling me about bodies, Steve. Okay. They're calling me well, about little are. stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and there's something else about the Davis case. If you look up the Florida Supreme Court, I would highly recommend you read the Labarga dissent. The Labarga, I, it's, I don't know if it's a concurrence or dissent, but he, Labarga, if I was going to nominate somebody from the Florida Supreme Court to the U.S. Supreme Court, it would be Justice Labarga. He is mm. a Cuban refugee, and he has a very strong liberty interest. He's a brilliant writer. He grasps the essence of the problem, and he writes a great dissent in the Davis case. Um, but the the oral the point of all this, so how we got into this, is that oral argument for the Supreme Court that I did, I did not, the what I'm telling you, this discussion we had is the way it should have gone, but it, we never got to that. It was sure. like, they were just hammering me all this stupid, I mean, stuff, they were hammering on me and interrupting me and not allowing me to finish my thoughts, and I never got it out. It was in the briefing, though, and uh, the briefing was clear. Okay. So is that. that is that case completed or are we waiting on a oh, ruling yeah. on it? Oh no, no, that's over. Like I oh, said, this the is... Supreme Court ruled. Okay. It's just the oral argument is floating around the internet and a lot of people I say, see. is this you, Gosney? And I'm like, yes, that's one of my cases. You know, I orally argued. Okay, so I... this was done prior to you being on the internet and it's now resurfacing. Right. 
Gotcha. Okay. 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 Gotcha. Um, and I have this silly look on my face on the preview. It's like, like this, because that's me <laughs> biting my tongue because, you know, yeah. as soon as like it came up because you, I'm, the people are saying I'm interrupting you, but like whenever they, whenever the justice speaks, you have to shut off mid sentence. And so I'm like, okay, I'll, okay, justice. So I'd like to answer. Oh, well, justice over here. Like, I mean, that's the way it goes. And it's, right. it's not really, I mean, oral argument is really overrated. I'd rather just rely on the briefing, but you know, sometimes you've got to do what you got to do. There's not oral argument, I think is overrated. It's the often the justices, especially at the appellate level, they've already made up their mind and there's very little that's going to happen at oral argument that may change it. What they're usually looking for, uh, as far as I understand, is they're looking for um, a pointer here and there to round out some thought that they've they've got formulated on maybe a portion of their brief. You are sadly mistaken. <laughs> maybe I'm optimistic, Steve. <laughs> no, no. What they do is you've got, you might have two judges and the third one, you've got the one on one side, one on the other, and the third one doesn't know where they are. And they're having some debate that you have no clue what they're talking about. And so the one that's against you wants to trap you and say, well, Mr. Gosney, you would admit this scenario. And then you're like, oh yeah, well, I'd admit that, but I think the issue is over here and you just lost your case in oral argument. So there you go. don't argue or don't do oral argument. I only do oral arguments in specific circumstances. And that is number one. And so if I'm going to the U S Supreme court, which I've got a case right now that I'm going to, um, I've, I've just requested, or in fact, I did it today. I requested oral argument today because I want to exhaust all my state remedies. Um, and I, if I waive oral argument, I don't ever want that to be seen as federal waiver by I did not exhaust my state remedies. So whenever I've got a case that I'm taking to the U.S. Supreme Court, I will do everything in my power to argue in every way. Also, if the state misrepresents something in the brief, if the if there's a piece of physical evidence that I want the state the judges to focus on, because otherwise they'll blow me off and they won't look at the evidence. Whereas if they if I orally argue it, they are forced to because they've got to confront me. And uh, and those are generally my rules. Well, there you go. Uh, techno. <laughs> okay, what you want to know? I train people on this crap. <laughs> uh, techno gold. Techno gold. Oh, one says I'm probably never going to make it to another stream because they're too late for me. But take my money and fat shame me. Techno gold. Uh, and he also became a monthly supporter. Thank you so much. First of all, don't give up hope. Uh, it's an it's a gateway drug. And it's very likely that you'll show up and be like, oh, well, I could be up late tonight. <laughs> And then suddenly your life is ruined and that's great. But there are also daytime streams and there will be more coming soon. It's just, um, I'm not looking to start. I, I leave uh, next week to go to Philadelphia for a live show. I'm not looking to start a trial right before that. So um, I, I'm, I'm holding off on uh, starting a new trial in the next week or so here. But when I get back from Philly, um, I'm going to have the entire month of May where I'll be around and hopefully have some daytime uh availability to to get on a trial stream or two so um don't give up hope but i will fat shame you um i i can do here, that you, can you do that i'm gonna I, let me go a little refill through the water here and i'm yeah you go ahead and do your yeah bring a sidecar with you no, i'm just kidding <laughs> you do whatever you want i'm joking <laughs> you're muted so i can't hear you but it's it's fine um okay techno techno gold oh one uh you donated on Rumble, and when you do, they put a little whale next to your picture, which is appropriate for you, uh, except for the little part. Um, you are a giant, disgusting creature of the sea because the ground can't sustain your girth. It cannot sustain the weight and pressure that you put on it. You crack flagstones just by walking on them, and that should have you embarrassed. You can't stay awake for the night stream why? Because of all the fried chicken you consumed in the previous hour? Just, uh, uh. That's not you falling asleep, by the way. That's your cardiac arrest killing you. And you somehow, by the grace of God, waking up in the morning. But only so he can laugh because heaven doesn't have room for someone your size. You need to trim down, brother. Because one of these days, those coronary events are going to claim you. And if there's nowhere to put you, we'll just have another planet for Neil deGrasse Tyson to classify. And that would be a shame worse than hell, my friend. Um, 
Hartman says judges seem to enjoy letting their politically connected friends and cops get away with stuff all the time. It's only the little people that they love throwing in prison. That happens. That does happen. Uh, it's, it happens, unfortunately, too too often. Uh, Go for big guy. Nine one one says, "Did you see Danny crying on her stream the other night? She lost her best dog. Wink. No, I did not see any, and I do not believe those salacious rumors." No, 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 no. She was uh, crying about this case, this horrible murder case that she's covering on trial, and she was getting very emotional about it. Um, and you know, that's the thing. Danny's got a lot of depth. I really like her. She's um an interesting person. I, I like all sides of her. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Fantastic! Fantastic! What's, hey, what? What? I I hesitate what? to ask. What case? What what horrible case? Oh, it's just, it's a terrible case. It's two kids got murdered and oh, buried, damn. and and they they exhumed the bodies six months later, and another woman. It's some kind of crazy cult out in Idaho, I think. And oh, I I want one of those. You want one of these? No, I want a cult. Oh, a cult? Well, you can start it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying. Oh, you need to be like <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard and go on a yacht and just have people send you money to oh my reveal God, your you... secrets of uh, whatever. No, see, God saw in advance when he made me, Steve. He knew that if I ever acquired a yacht, I would be too powerful. And so he gave me motion <laughs> sickness. <laughs> and um, and so, there, like, <laughs> look. <laughs> yachts are hilarious and i would love to have one in concept but i know if i was on a yacht i would feel miserable the entire time it's the only thing that has kept me on land for all of this uh all of my life it wasn't so. said like it unless it's a sex cult i'm not joining <laughs> wait are there different types of cults i oh yeah what good is a cult if you don't have sex right <laughs> <laughs> The whole purpose of so, it. See, I, I'm not. I don't know. Although I will tell you, famous Gosneys in history. Um, one of the survivors of the Jonestown massacre was uh, a was Gosney. Oh yeah. Wait, yeah. someone lived through that? Yeah, yeah. They hid out. They they fled and they were hiding in the woods. Oh, what is this? That's your copper bottom rum you said. Hey, yeah, look at that. That's Daytona Beach's own. They brew it up. So tell me what you, you did. Did you give you? You said you liked it, but you're not a big rum drinker. Is what I'm I mean. not a big rum drinker, but I, I, this is aged. It's clearly barrel aged, and uh, it it has the same types of uh, woody notes that you would get from a whiskey, and I like that a lot. Um, yeah, this is this is like right down the street from my office, like. Right down the street, and and they, I did the tour, and they have it all distilleries, and they have everything, um, everything all lined up. It, it's really they do it right there, and they, they to explain me, and I was I was so impressed with how much care and attention. It's a very small little distillery right here in Daytona where they do everything, and I'm like, wow, this is something. And and then oh, it's because of, you were selling so many books. Because you sold so many books for me, I'm like, I got to do something nice for Nick. <laughs> so I sent him the the, uh, the rum from Daytona. It's called Copper Bottom Distillery. So I, I wish you see. I need to get. I need. A, see, I'm stupid because I should grift. I should have some kind of like affiliate link or something with them, right? If they'll do it, uh, it uh, they're small, uh, smaller distilleries, so they might, but. Alcohol brands have very strict advertising requirements because governments get involved, like alcohol, tobacco, stuff like that. So they have kind of rules around it, and, and they're kind of hesitant to, to do so. Okay, well, we are here to grift the book, so at some point, and uh, I will just, let's just get, get that show on the road and say stevegosney.com is the only place you can get it. And look at this thing, forward by Nick Ricada on this very important book and i and i will let me just say i thank you for the forward even though it was different you stressed me out but you did <laughs> I didn't get mean to i know but it's i understand you're like my friend mac in the book you know not quite that bad but <laughs> um i love you anyway and he did a very nice job on the forward it's beautiful but also i mean i i thought about it i thought about like who would be a good person to write the forward and one of the things is that you have a you have a commitment to individuality and freedom that I think we share. Yeah. And I and I really thought that you were the right person to write it. And I and I was proven correct by your beautiful forward. So thank you for that. 
Thank you. I also have a writing degree, which helps. Really? <laughs> yeah. So that's why you pay put stuff off so long. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> writing degrees are just putting off life. That's all they are. <laughs> uh, but speaking of this, people are right. I do have a cult. I don't know if you saw my, uh, I got my custom plates for my car. Look at that. Why? There you go. Good job. <laughs> Very good. I can't wait. I can't wait for the complaints to come rolling in about uh, me driving um, around the area. Always uh, under the speed limit. Amazing Wireless 2 says, someone get this Gosney fella a sidecar. Why no. the F is he awake if he's not drunk? And now he's got one. So perfect. Thank you. Well, that was only on request of Nick. Normally, I would demand a certain number of books, but I know your chat is going to, your people are going to go to the book and get it. Because how, let me ask you this, mm. how many book forwards have you done? One. And it's this book right here, only available at stevegazia.com, right? So we got to get you on on a, a little, uh, we got to talk. We got to talk. We got some things uh, to talk about, but. I, I got beef with my locals now. Lacey says Nick didn't read one page, only that forward. I think that Steve can attest by reading that forward that he knows I read a significant portion of that book. No, no, you definitely. In fact, that was the delay because I had sent it to you, you know, three or weeks or four weeks before or whatever. And I kept mm -hmm. sending you revisions. <laughs> <laughs> but but I you know, but I, I, I said like it. a new email every day, new revisions, new revisions, new revisions. I'm like, Jesus, Steve. <laughs> well, I when I work, I work, you know. And so, anyways, I, I was sending these revisions. But the thing is, is that he's like, I I want to do a good job on it. I want to read it. I don't want to just make it up and slap dash it because I I will tell another secret. See, we're one side card. I'm already spilling my secrets. Oh man, I wrote Nick a forward for him to pre-approve. And it was silly and it was funny and it was a mashup and it was in Nick's voice. I think I got your voice pretty good. You did a pretty good job. Pretty good. But it was not, it was your, your forward was way better than what I could have expected. And so um, thank you for that. I even sent you some edits. Uh, yeah. Some, so I found, I found some uh, typos that I had to, that, I, that my yeah, autism are, triggered. And there's a few typos in it. But, you know, don't ever let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And no, I think no, no. It's, it's important to get this information out. It's important to get this book out because it it really is about freeing your mind from tyrannies, internal and external, and a guidebook, a plan for your life. So that's what it is. We'll talk about it more. In a, in yeah, a, and when right. you free your mind, the rest will follow. Your uh, ass will follow. <laughs> no, I said the rest will oh, follow. okay, all right, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh richard boseland first super chat from him thank you sir uh but there's no message attached i really appreciate the donation though chris d says i need you to fat shame me i may be six four but i am 260 and need to lose some weight just found out that i need a cpap oh chris man we got some you, tough ones tonight you need a cpap that's cute uh, a CPAP is this wonderful machine. I don't know if you guys know this. What well, tries to inflate a fat person at night, but it just can't because their skin is already stretched to the limit. Come on, come it just on. shoves air into their mouth because it's the only thing keeping food from going in at night, too. They have this protective mask as they try and inhale their loved ones next to them. My goodness, Chris, how many children have you eaten in your sleep? The rest of us just have to settle for spiders, but I guess Dracula over there gets the greater lives. 6'4 and 260 pounds, and I bet you carry all of it near your feet as your stomach drags to the floor. My God, man. Next time, instead of a CPAP, try a diet. Uh, TR Greater Rex says, wait, you call yourself the law pope and we're not members of a cult? I've been lied to. I thought I was already a member of the Rackets cult. Well, if you haven't had sex with me, you're not in it yet. Uh, we almost had that. sex in Las Vegas. Well, you don't even remember it. No, you don't because you said almost. Richard Boslin <laughs> says, Steve, I heard your comment the other night about playing the bass part for La Villa Stan, uh, Strangiato, yes. one of my favorite Rush, Rush songs. I've been learning the lead guitar part. Rush is one of my all-time favorite bands, RIP to Neil Peart. Oh, my God. The, you, this guy, he's he's touching my erogenous zones. I think the... I think the uh, <laughs> he's it's, calling me the gay one. I think the... Uh, <laughs> well, I'm geeking out on Rush. It's good birth control, by the way, Rush. Um, I will say that the, the guitar <laughs> solo for La Villa Strangiato is like one of the greatest guitar solos of all time. And I will say that I'm proud of that bass line that I, I was able to hack through 
on my Rumble channel, I play my these instruments. There's my beautiful Rickenbacker, and I play a Villa Strange Auto, and I just did Long Distance Runaround by by Yes. So I, I you know I do everything on my Rumble channel. I, I just do whatever I want, and I feel like, you know, it's all that's fun. how that's how life should be. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's start talking about Thomas. We're an hour in. I haven't even broached the main well, subject. Clarence Thomas is being uh, excoriated by the media uh, and only by the media. That's what is most important. Um, well, and maybe a few concerned Democrats like AOC or whatever uh, over allegedly accepting gifts from a billionaire. So, Steve, can you talk to me about what the uh, alleged freak out is is going on? What What's going on with this? How valid is it? Um, is Clarence Thomas uh, the big cheater on the Supreme Court? What What's up with this? No, they, I mean, the left has been after Clarence Thomas since the moment he was nominated because a conservative, successful, thoughtful, independent thinking black man is a threat to the, uh, the democratic leftist plantation. And he is a, uh, a free thinker. He is an original thinker, a very deep thinker, a hardworking man. And, uh, and he is everything they hate. They want people to stay on the plantation and vote Democrat. And so he, they've been after him forever. What they did is they changed the rules as far as disclosure requirements. And now they are saying ex post facto that he didn't disclose something that he didn't need to disclose under the prior rules. And now they've changed the rules and says, ah, oh, you didn't disclose this. Yes, but the rules, he is now complying with the rules as they are. I mean, what's the guy supposed to do? Not, ex not go on any trips, not live a life. I, I think that and the justices let, should be required to get off their asses and get out in the world and the community. And let's let's be very clear here. So what what happened is that um, Clarence Thomas went on trips with someone he has been friends with for a long time. Uh, they they go on family trips together. Now that person happens to be a billionaire, and the, so the trips are awesome, right? When you travel with wealthy people. And they're uh, they're bringing you along for a trip, or you and your family. You're going to travel in style, like you're going to do that, and uh, and that is fine. Now, interestingly, this guy who has uh, who has done this does not have any cases before the Supreme Court. He doesn't have any companies that have any cases before the Supreme Court. This is just, hey, we're going on a trip together, and uh, and they do that. So the question is, I guess the question for the country is. Should a Supreme Court justice be required to disclose personal trips taken with someone because they're a billionaire? And would we require Clarence Thomas to uh, disclose a trip taken to a Motel 6 with someone who makes $30,000 a year who happens to be his friend too? Would we similarly be concerned about it or is it only because this person is a billionaire? And it's, I think just, it's just, I mean, I don't even, it, it's just all... I, it is so, I mean, there is so little credibility on the accusers in this thing that it's, what is this? I don't know yeah, if you I, get this reference, but no, it's, I, don't, I don't get that. Have you ever seen American History X? No. Okay. <laughs> let me, let me, walk, let me kill the joke by laughing at it here. I'm going to curb stomp this joke by explaining it. So uh, this is Ed Norton, right? And this is... Also, Ed Norton in the bottom right corner. Um, this is Ed Norton from American History X, uh, where he is a neo-Nazi skinhead who opens the movie by um, curb stomping and killing an African-American man who is trying to steal his truck. And then he goes to prison and it's a really good movie uh, where he kind of he kind of sees the reality of where. Uh, race, racism and gangs interplay in prison and stuff like that. And it, the, the movie's also about his little brother, played by Edward Furlong, um, kind of following in the footsteps of Edward Norton and how that plays out for him. But again, with, so we're talking about Clarence Thomas. Look, they start out as like, nice, fresh-faced Ed Norton and go straight into racist murdering Ed Norton. And that's fantastic. That's a great meme. I love it. I love it a lot. <laughs> how so, have you not seen American History X? I don't watch, is that TV? No, it's a movie. It's a very good movie. I don't. I, I don't watch any movie. I don't. I haven't watched a movie in ages. This movie probably came out while you were still watching them, though. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm this not movie a, came out when I was a teen, like a, a young teenager, I think. Well, 
Sorry. It's, it's not, a good not one. I don't, you know, Look, it, it takes a lot. If you have lot. occasion to watch a movie, this is one that could go on the list and you would not be disappointed. You know, the latest movie I really loved was Dune. I can't wait for the new Dune movie. I'm going to. You need to talk to Ty Beard on your channel about Dune. What's who's Ty Beard? Ty, my friend Ty Beard. You've probably been on stream with him. He's a lawyer down in Texas. Okay. Um, he's a, he's a good dude. He loves Dune, and you guys could just probably talk about Dune forever with you. No, no. I mean, I'm not I'm not a freak about it. I'm just saying it was a good movie. Come on. Let's, yeah. Well, I thought I thought you would. I thought maybe you were a big fan of Dune in general. I've well, never no, I, read. I it. like it. I've read the books, and I I'm into it. But I'm not like, oh my god, it's the greatest thing. I'm going to follow every little detail. You know, like Star Wars. Well, I like the first three Star Wars were good. They're not. But I mean, I'm not going to live my life by it. You know, I mean, it's like, it's a movie, right? It's fun. I mean, come on. Let's keep things in perspective. <laughs> Good. I, I like that. That's a healthy approach. Um, okay. Uh, Richard, wait, I read, I read that one. Oh, yeah. So we're talking Clarence Thomas. Mm -hmm. We're talking Clarence Thomas and this this ethics thing. So they've they made a stink about it. They've made the rule, uh, the rule change. Here's Here's my question for you, Steve. Can Congress actually create a set of rules for the Supreme Court? That's a very good question. That has I to asked them. That's a very good question. That is a separation of powers question. I have never had to deal with that issue in my practice, but I will say I don't think that, anybody has. <laughs> yes. And the question is really their only remedy is impeachment or court yes. backing. Right. And uh and they just they just want to discredit him. They want to throw slime and throw mud to make it so like, well, I have a friend. I have a friend who studied black studies. Ooh. And she I didn't know black of, people did that. Yeah. She came out of, out of college and studied <laughs> that and went yeah, to law. That was a, that was a racist joke. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just dropped it. It was a, it was a joke. It was, a, never mind. Sorry. She came out of college. Well, I, I'm just telling you, you know, I'm just. I'm just here. I don't know. You do what you tell the jokes. I'll tell the thing, you know? So you're living in your world. I'm living in my world, right? That's what it is. So she's, um, you know, I am really a lightweight. You know that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I so do. I got girl drinks and I'm a lightweight. No, but she came out and she's a beautiful, a beautiful, smart, privileged, intelligent lawyer that came mm -hmm. out of UCF law. She studied afro studies or whatever that racial thing is in undergrad yeah. but then went to law school and became a lawyer right right and so the first thing i'm like have you ever heard of thomas soul and she's like who oh, so i'm Jesus. like so i'm like you you studied black studies and you didn't learn about thomas soul like what are you doing right so i introduced her to thomas mm. soul i bet and you learned about tony morrison though yeah exactly all the typical leftist bs you know so to be black is to be leftist bs on that right so she was really impressed because I think Thomas Sowell is one of the premier intellectuals of our time. I've read like four or five of his books. Yeah, he's um, fantastic. And I have an autographed book by him, actually. He's great. He's like um, Milton Friedman who sat in the sun too long. Bill, he's beyond Milton Friedman. That guy, I mean, Thomas Sowell is the premier intellectual of our time. But And and he happens to be black, but who cares? I mean, we well, have to say that, right? Right. Um, but what were we talking about? Oh, so so I, I said to her something about Clarence Thomas, like, oh, I'm friendly with his son, and and I know it. And she was like, oh, Clarence Thomas, right? Like immediate negative reaction. I'm like, well, what's that negative reaction about? Where are you coming from with that? Well, she doesn't know. She's just programmed to dislike. And that's the thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like we have these we have these propaganda things and that's what they're doing. They're throwing slime yes. on him. It's like, Oh, well I heard something bad about him. So he's to be not listened to because of this slime that they're throwing. That has no depth to it, no reality to it, no truth to it at all. But now when you bring him up, it's like, Oh, I heard something bad. No, didn't he do something bad a long time ago that are so right. It's just enough slime to get the headline readers in yep. the hook so they can, they can dis dismiss his ideas sick yeah and the the crazy <laughs> thing is uh, so none of the what they tried to do to clarence thomas was disgusting um and they oh, played, absolutely they played on racial stereotypes they had no problems doing that and then uh wh what he was accused of had no credibility and the, the crazy thing was if what he was accused of was true he was basically accused of making a crude joke at one point um which uh which doesn't seem to be the case anyway 
but um, but what they what they did to him was just disgusting. And, disgusting. and, and you know who was involved with that was Joe Biden. Yeah. Oh my well, god, that was, that, was, that was so disgusting. I, that was I'm back so... when Joe Biden only liked black kids. Common theme of who Joe Biden likes, by the way. <laughs> They're all under. You just seven. don't why why put the black modifier? Let's just say kids. <laughs> well, he still likes all of them. I just don't know if he likes black ones anymore. Is that I've only, corn pop? I've only seen Joe Biden sniffing white children lately because he's only hanging around, you know, uh, privileged white Democrats these days. I, actually, I think that I think Clarence Thomas was influenced by Thomas Sowell. I would imagine so. Yeah, part of his uh, transition into conservative dumb, whatever that might be was was going and seeing Thomas Sowell. But um, no, Thomas is a brilliant. If anybody wants to learn about the real Clarence Thomas and not the BS Clarence Thomas, look at his autobiography called My My Grandfather's Son. It's mm -hmm. really excellent. It's an excellent book. Um, and it talks about, I mean, you know, Clarence Thomas was so poor, his mother had to give him up. He was in Savannah. Mother had to give him up to his grandparents because she could not feed him. See, and he he has risen from that poverty, and he chose not to get involved in all this racial stuff because oh, you're a black guy. Well, you got to get into civil rights law, right? <laughs> Is that you, corn Joseph? pop? Huh? We meet again at last. Is that oh, you, corn pop? <laughs> what a liar! What a liar for a president. I'll tell you, this is a frightening, we're living in a frightening world. Our government can kill us all. Do you know yep. that? This is oh, not yeah. a joke. We are not fooling around. But people think, oh, this government's a joke. I'll just elect the idiot. But, you know, you got to take this stuff seriously because they that our world is a dangerous place. I don't know. It's it's horrifying. Well, and we, we found out, um, oh, I'd love your opinion on this. We've never talked about this. So uh, we have had two presidents drone strike um, on foreign soil, American citizens, and kill them. One of those presidents was Republican. One of those presidents was Democrat. However, one of those presidents knew they were drone striking an American citizen, and the other president incidentally drone struck an American citizen. Do you know the two presidents? I'm going to say Obama and Clinton. Obama and Bush. And Bush, okay. Now, Bush ordered a drone strike. He did not know there was an American citizen present, uh, allegedly. Um, he was drone striking a, a foreign terrorist agent, right? Did it. There happened to be an American there as collateral damage. But Obama actually drone struck two American citizens, I should say. Um, he, it was uh, Anwar al Alwaki, uh, along with his son, who is a 16-year-old American citizen. Do you think that they received due process on the drone strike or was that was that a violation of due process rights because that's a that's a very complicated question i don't think it's as straightforward as people want it to be it, it's not straightforward <laughs> i actually had a discussion with <laughs> <What? laughs> gonna, what? i no, it's, i feel so stupid because i i, I mean like i wrote an article on this no i did not write an article on this but i i was on the Judicial Nominating Commission, mm -hmm. which which selected judges, right, and had a discussion about this um, with a judge who was a JAG officer, who was in positions of, I don't know, I'm getting a little this this sidecar loses my mind in in law stuff in in this kind of thing. perfect. But this I, is I where, will. This is where we <laughs> lubricate the gears a little bit. Go buy let, my book at stevegosney.com. Okay, and let let this slide into some 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 raw thought rather than some polished thought. Okay, I love so it. So here's the raw thought. So I had dialogued with him because he was of the opinion that the Geneva Conventions did did not cover or covered illegal enemy combatants, and mm. I am of the opinion that an illegal enemy combatant loses the protections of the Geneva Convention by the mere fact that they are an Ill illegal enemy combatant, that that right. distinction has a, a meaning. Yes. The, the Geneva Conventions protects those, number one, who are signatories of the Geneva Convention. Correct. For example, we have a country named America, United States of America, and we are signatories to the Geneva Convention. Therefore, our soldiers are protected 
by operation of law to that. And our soldiers go out and have uniforms and fight on behalf of our country. Therefore, the Geneva Convention applies. When you are not part of a sovereign country and you are fighting without uniforms in hiding, you are subject to summary execution by our, our military forces. You are entitled to zero due process. So, and I, I know this cuts against my anti-death penalty case, and this will be in the book, my next book, which is on the death penalty in process. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it because this is It'll be argument. done in three days. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a long-term project. But I will say that, so, um, so the thing is like, if you're a sniper in Afghanistan before we bugged out and destroyed everything, um, and you've got a terrorist killing kids one by one. Does that terrorist deserve due process? You pull that damn trigger and kill that terrorist, right? Right. So there's no due process there at all. That's called an act of war. But you've got a terrorist who's not in uniform and who is not subject to the Geneva well, Conventions. Therefore, I would say there, therefore is due there is no Geneva Convention that applies to those not unlawful enemy combatants. I agree, but I, I would say that that is due process. We've just decided that the process due to that person is very minimal. Okay. Well, now let's add to the citizenship. So the question now becomes, if you're an unlawful enemy combatant, but a citizen of the sovereign, right? do you have any kind of legal protections? And the crazy thing is an American citizen on foreign soil who is uh, opposed to America has less legal protection than a non-citizen on foreign soil. But that may be because of how those cases uh, were, or when those cases were decided relative to 9-11, which is a really interesting um, discussion. And someday, I have got to bring John Radson on to talk about this at some time. But the two cases are, I believe, Hamdi and Hamdan, um, which well, sound very fascinating. similar. Fascinating. The, the case, the controlling case on this about the process due to unlawful enemy combatants is out of World War II. Oh, see, this is so good. You're you're not quite though. Go ahead, give me give me some more. So it's, not it's quite actually out of World War II, the German. But... No, no, wait. The German saboteurs landed on. Oh, this is a case that I hate. Panavidra Beach. Yep. You know where Panavidra Beach is? No. Right here in my jurisdiction, Saint Augustine, Florida, Seventh Circuit of my county. I visit there often. Panavidra. They these German saboteurs got off a submarine, landed on. They were supposed to cause all kinds of mayhem. And they were subject to summary execution, and it's an act of war because they were German saboteurs out of uniform and were subject were not subject to the Geneva Conventions because they were out of uniform. Okay, so uh, there's a there's another case that came with those that I really don't like okay. because it violates the Constitution's rule on treason. Are you familiar with this one? No, lay it, lay it on me, baby. One of those German saboteurs, father. Uh, housed housed him after he went to Germany um, and came back. And the father allegedly did not know anything, but he was jailed as a corruption of blood on treason charges without two witnesses, which is pretty crazy because treason requires under right. the Constitution two witnesses. And the Supreme Court basically said, eh, screw it. Because well, let me, it let me bring time. this into the present time. If we get... If we get a President Trump in 2024, can he drone sti strike George Soros? I hope so. I know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, that man maybe I'm for this thing, you know? That man has wrought more destruction on not just the U.S., but but the globe and individual countries than just about anyone in recent memory. You know that that guy was a, a Nazi collaborator? It does not surprise me. He was, he was a Jew who would turn in and point the finger at his fellow Jews and send them to the death camps. I think he still does that. Um, okay, here's what we need to do. We need to get off of YouTube, especially since we're talking about uh, the patron saint of YouTube, George Soros. And we are going to move directly to Rumble. And Yay! I will see. Go Rumble, uh, man. Rumble rules. It's It's so great. It is so great. So we're going to, I'm going to read the YouTube super chats. We're going to move over to rumble. We'll make fun of Soros and his small PP energy and, uh, and do all sorts of other fun stuff as we get over there. Um, let me read these cult of personality says, man, the left really wants Clarence Thomas gone. Oh yeah. 
Also, what was the whole deal with the Pentagon leaks that happened and the dude they caught? Also, Steve, give us your top three favorite bass lines. Let's go with that one first. Okay, well, I would say Wrathchild by Iron Maiden. Okay. La Villa Strange Yato by Rush. Mm -hmm. and uh, Long Distance Runaround by Yes. There we go. Okay, as for the Pentagon leaks, allegedly there's a 21-year-old military man working at the Pentagon who maybe leaked some documents, got arrested, and will probably never get the correct and full story on that. I'm not saying he's not guilty. I have no idea about it. I just don't trust the government when it comes to describing leaks, even if they're accurate. So... Uh, so don't know, but yeah. And finally, yes, the left really has wanted Clarence Thomas gone ever since he opened his negroid mouth after Scalia died, man, did they start hating him more and more than they ever did in the past. And they had already, they already hated him. They were just happy that he was quiet. Once he started talking, they started talking about, they cannot get Clarence Thomas out of their minds. Uh, Lauren de Laguna says, I passed the bar. Great stream tonight. Big congrats, Lauren. I'm so happy you did that. Look, uh, I I can't remember who said, uh, who introduced me to you. They sent a super chat about you taking the bar. Might have been, I don't think it was Danny. It was somebody, uh, I, think, I think on Twitter, I think you're on Twitter with me because um, if I recall, you have some interesting topics to talk about and, uh, and I think you're a YouTuber also. Can, I, um, can if, I say that I actually had a person from the chats apply to my circuit as a public defender's office and is coming to work with us in August and cool. I will be mentoring him. So if you are an aspiring lawyer and you want to learn from the best, come to the seventh circuit, man. Just that's Daytona beach, uh, St. Augustine, Florida, Palm coast, Flagler County, Putnam County, the Deland area. That, that is my area. And we have a great team. We have the best public defender's office in the whole state of Florida. And we have, um, and we have, a great place to learn how to be a lawyer. There you go. Uh, Roby McCann, have you ever seen a judge allow a jury to ask the witnesses on the stand testifying questions before being excused? Yes. New Mexico yeah. versus Alexis Avila attempted first degree murder, child endangerment, causing bodily harm. Okay. Can you talk about that, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, it's up to the judge, but some judges actually allow the jurors to ask questions of the uh, witnesses and what they do is after the parties, after the attorneys are done, they'll they'll send their little notes, any question, and they'll send a little note to the, the, the judge of their questions. And then the judges and the attorneys will cons conspire <laughs> and find out if there's anything that legally objectionable. And if it's not, they will then read the question for the witness and the witness will answer. So that is proper and allowed, but it depends on the judge and the jurisdiction. There you go. Uh, Roby also became a paralegal. Thank you. Welcome. Chris Way says, I'm hoping for a prayer. Not sure why I'm asking you. Uh, because, dude, ask anyone who you know will pray for you to pray for you when you need it. Uh, but here goes. My girlfriend and I are going through a scare. It's going to be a big test of our values, depending on what comes out tomorrow. Well, I don't know what scare that is. Um, is I don't know if it's a pregnancy scare, an STD scare, <laughs> housing scare. I don't know what it is, man. But you know what? Uh, what I'm confident of is that uh, the person we're praying to, God, would know what your scare is. And I pray that your your nerves are calmed. The outcome is uh, is as it should be, um, whether it's your plan or someone else's. And more importantly, that uh, that you two are able to weather. Weather it, come together, and overcome whatever the answer is, my friend. Uh, amen to that. Angry Whiskers, since you said you like music, Steve, do you like electronic music? I love heavy electronic music like Bro Step, which is a powerful type of dubstep. Oh, man, I'll tell you, I love electronic music. And see, everybody get tags me as a metalhead because they're they're so intrigued by that dichotomy of you know image versus reality. But I love, love Tangerine Dream. And Tangerine Dream is the Virgin Years. They have a bunch. Of, any album from Tangerine Dream in the Virgin Years is my kind of place. And I would start with a with an album called Poland, which is live in Poland in, in um, Warsaw. That is a great album, and everything else in that era is phenomenal. I love it. So yes, I am a big fan of Tangerine Dream electronic music. Also Vangelis, also great. There's a lot of Berlin school type electronica that I'm into, um, but that, that would take a long time. But 
thumbs up for the for the question. Voldemort says Steve G is a top G. Good looking out for your audience. Need more Steve and throw some more Drex in the mix. Drex and I get people. Drex is such a busy guy, and I'm a very busy guy. And the the main times we get to link up are when his daughter has uh, a few days to come hang out with my kids um, because then we get to make the excuse to do it. Uh, I, I love hanging out with him. I love having his daughter hang out with my kids because they just get along and have a blast. But um, during school year, it's really tough because we have conflicting school schedules, even over the weekends and stuff like that. So Drex has not been available to be here at my house um, and, and he's really busy when I stream most of the time, uh, due to his own work schedule, but he said, what he is may his be, job? I don't talk about other people's jobs that well, aren't he's public. not a lawyer though. No, he's not a lawyer. Okay. No. Um, but, uh, he said he may be on this Friday. Um, he has to work up until right before the stream, but he may be on this Friday, uh, to hang out. So we'll, um, we'll see, we might get him. Uh, let's see, where the hell was this? Um, Primark Vulcan says, Steve is the band lawyer from Metalocalypse. <laughs> Xander's Rand says, Steve, uh, can you tell Nick to get the cat painting? Get I'm not the cat painting there. I'm not going to go back and get the damn cat painting. They're just looking for me to be fat. Uh, Angry Whiskers says, do you like dubstep, Nick? It's sometimes epic. I stopped listening to techno before dubstep came out. Um, I don't have a particular dislike of it. I just don't care. Um, but Like, it's... I, it's just not on my radar, really. Uh, my favorite techno song is probably the remix of Tribe Called Quest. Uh, once again, tip. What a great song. Roby McCann says, you never stop wondering who they would have been. No, I know. But Roby, here, here's the thing about, this is going back to the miscarriage thing, and I just want to make one point about it. Um, you're sometimes tempted to have wanted to have those uh, those children. Okay. Later, we have we've had five after three miscarriages. If we would have had those first children, the five that we have would not exist. Whether we had five more children or or, or whatever, they would not be the same people that they are. And I cannot imagine life with children that are different than what I have. So, like, it, you're you're this was a thing that happened. And if you just go back, you're like, oh, we can go back. And if, if I had that kid, we would have six. No, you might not. You might have one. You might have zero. You might have 10. Uh, you don't know what your life will be. And you can never live your life um, attached to the potential that that was missed because that that potential is a part of you. And, and it matters just as much as, as, as anything it could have been. Well, so, and I will say that in prepare... I, I, you know, I make us in the hardest two chapters, I'd say the most challenging chapters that I wrote were the two chapters on faith. And one of those chapters says, and I, I, I was looking for it, I can't find it immediately in my own book, but it's that motherhood is the ultimate affirmation of life. It's basically the ultimate affirmation of God. And he, motherhood is a heroic endeavor. And uh, I really, we really need to recognize that as humanity, that every, every birth and every mom is doing a, giving us a gift. And, you know, Mary is obviously our, our, our leader, our, our, our symbol, but mothers are following the example of Mary by bringing life into this world, which is good. Uh, Grimwolf says, "Hey Nick, my twin Shalong is now stiff. My twin Shalong is now stiff. Cheers, avocado cookie. My snake Gunted just died. Can I get a toast? Ooh, woo. uh, to your dead, to your dead Gunted snake. Angry Whiskers, tell Chat they're kind of epic in my opinion. Chat, you're kind of epic in Angry Whiskers' opinion. Xander's rants. Is there a clip of Danny's reaction after she realizes what Steve was doing? I I don't know." No, no, she 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 didn't realize it. I think until after the stream, when I afterwards, you know, sometimes we talk afterwards. I said, you know what? I, and she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but she's a good sport. She was a good oh, sport about Dan, it. You know, Danny's awesome. Danny she's... is awesome, and and she's got a not very nice figure, and we all need to see it. And I'm proud. I'm proud of the fact that I was able to bring this to all the chat. Um, so thank you. Buy a book in recognition of the great Danny Hahn. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see. Zan oh, wait, Valhalla await says my urethra is wider than Nick's shoulders. <laughs> Mac McCormick, welcome to paralegal status. Uh, Kina X122 says, yes, Nick, not every cult is a sex cult, though cult leaders of all kinds like to exploit their female members for the hanky panky. Oh, well, no, all cults should be a sex cult. Oh, damn it. Steve-O has written an article on that. It says, thank you, the law pope, for introducing us all to Steve-O and that his mother has completed chemotherapy. Oh, can't wait for Unbreaded, the Gosney edition. Xander's rants. Yes, Unbreaded, the I don't know about that, but yes, my mom did complete successfully chemo. I'm so blessed. You got to beat my mom, right? She came on your stream. Yes. And um, what was the first part of that? I don't know. Too many sidecars. Don't worry I, you about know, it. Sidecars. See, I Didn't lose you just it. have one? Yes. One too many sidecars. One I love you, this man you, so much. If you buy me another one, you know, what is it? What's got to be the rule on more sidecars? I don't know. I don't know. I, I tend to... I rarely do like the rules on drinking because then like people do them and I end up drinking too much. Yes. Yes. Well, and too so, much for me is too. <laughs> uh, yeah. For me. Oh my God. L last yesterday I drank a ton. I felt great uh, yeah. through all of it, but like on Camelot show and then I was on Chrissy's show. And then uh, I, when I was doing my local stream um, I was like, I feel really good. And then I realized I had like nine drinks that night. But well, I will say you've already sold six books. Oh, cool. So we haven't really even been guys go to stevegosney.com and buy prepare. We'll talk more about well, it. We need, we'll break. talk on the rumble channel. We do need to yeah. talk about what it's going to, because I, you know, yes. it's not just, I, it's like, I hate to say grift because the purpose of this book is to save humanity. I mean, my, my highest, my highest, everything I have, I put into this book because I want you to read it. It's not like, I understand that it's a grift and I got to make, but it's it's a basically a symbol like, yes, I, I appreciate what you're doing and what you're saying, Gosby, but it's much more important than that. It's an important book and I, I want you to read it. So stay with, go to Rumble when we talk, we're going to talk about this, I hope at some point in the stream about what is the content, what I'm trying to get through. I want you to read this book. It's not a matter of, it's not a matter. I, I mean, I don't believe in just shoveling garbage. They buy this, you know, I want you to read this because it's important. It's important to you to know this, to free your mind. And the rest will follow. And the ass will follow. No, be colorblind. Don't I don't know that so song. Is that a song. You don't know that song? What is that? I don't it's know. It's by... In vogue, I think free your mind it's from like the 80s. Oh, free your mind, right? Yeah, yeah there's Steve. Yeah. You know that okay. song, you want, yeah, but I don't let's come on, that's ridiculous. Xander's rant says, Steve, Ty was on stage with Nick in Vegas. He was, that's true. What say this again? Ty, I, Ty Beard. Well, while you, you were on you. stage, you were nerding out with Camelot and all them and doing all that gay stuff on the stage. Camelot was to my right. Yes. Dick was originally to my left and then Ty came up and came up and joined us and then Dick moved over one chair. I did not pay attention at all. You I didn't was, even watch the show? I was talking to Danny on the whole racism. Time. I know no, it's racism. not racism. It's like let me tell you, she's much prettier than you and we were talking wow. some deep okay. shit. Danny, I'm calling you out. Danny, we need to have a pretty off you and me, girl. You That's would right. lose that every day of the week, I and I and I'll say that she is a very in depth person. We were having a very good conversation, and you were talking about baldos. No, I was giving one away. It wasn't my well, job. yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. See, okay. I was I had one ear out. Uh, let's see. Um, Nick, don't tell Stephen that Ty rescheduled his billion dollar client to go see a fifteen minute preview of Dune. That's true. True story. Uh, let's see. Um, Kyan Rennell says, what's Steve opinion about female dog grooming? Oh no. Female cat grooming. Oh, uh, I think, I think he's talking about, um, whether or not women should be trimmed up, shaved or, or whatever in their, in their pubic areas. Oh, is it, do I have an opinion on that? I don't, do you I have don't... an opinion? You don't have to have one, but do you have one? Not really. Okay, I do. Uh, Ronald Reagan says, Steve, did OJ do it? Also, hail Nick R. First chat from Ronald Re uh, Reagan. R-E-G-G-I-N. Ronald Reagan. Um, did OJ do it? Yes. Very good. Nicholas Stero, union rep, labor law, says, since I consider most endorsements as a font front for bribes, 
This counts if the B has an interest in the outcome of a case. Okay, so the, uh, yes, the, the billionaire. Um, but there is no case before the Supreme Court, so therefore there shouldn't be any issues with disclosure. Right. Well, like it's that's... not just that. It's there, those are different things. There's one thing about whether you comply with disclosure requirements. There's another whether you didn't recuse yourself on something you have a personal interest in. Well, there's no allegation that that anything was before the court that he that he was had an interest in. For example, in the VMI case, Clarence Thomas did disqualify himself from ruling on the Clarence Thomas on the VMI case because his son was going to VMI right. at the time. So um so that's not the allegation. The allegation is he didn't disclose something, but the rules at the time did not require him to disclose it. So it's a BS allegation. And the answer to the previous question is um, tile floors, ladies. Uh, they they should be clean unless the landing strip is clever. But if it's just a landing strip, that is very 90s. It does not need to happen. Just just clean it all, go the, way. all the way. No, the, I, but, I get that. Go all the way. If you're going to go. But if it's clever, you way. can. If it's clever, you can have something there, but it better be a very clever design. Okay. No, no, no designs. Look, all or nothing. Special baby. occasions. All go commit. Go all commit. or nothing. All or Whew. nothing. He's like poofy 70s panties or bald as can be. Bald as Jack Murphy said. Um, Hayden 75 says, Do you have to go to law school or can you teach yourself and then take the bar exam? Always something I wondered about. Um, most states require you to go to law school. There are, I think, 14 states that allow a type of legal internship uh, in which you can intern with a law firm, um, a practicing attorney, and you can you can then uh, take the bar after that. What I would what I would suggest, though, is since you still need to take the bar, law schools teach you how to take the bar. Like that's what they do. They teach you the tools required to take the bar. They should be. They should be doing that a little bit because you do have to pass it. But, um, you know, interning, you can, depending on where you intern, you can get into a very niche thing and you'll spend a lot of extracurricular time catching up on all of the bar subjects that your that the firm does not practice in. And it can be very, very valuable to do that if you want to practice that type of law. You can get a lot of great experience under your belt as you're doing it and make very good connections and good networking but um, you have to realize the deficiencies in each system and compensate for them. And there are a ton of deficiencies in law school. I am not praising it at all. I think it's garbage, uh, largely. Um, Kyle Bogue says, all the snow's gone and the course opens Tuesday. I'm stoked, Kyle. Talk to me, brother. I am down to drive uh, drive down to the course and, and let's, let's get a round of golf in, brother. Uh, Xander's rant. Steve, where can I find a wife that is conservative Calvinist who would like someone who uses used to work for the Babylon B and is okay with me watching Nick? Well, you, I found there's a good wife, answer for this. Oh, well, you you give your answer. If you're looking for a conservative Calvinist, don't worry, God has it in the plans already, brother. And there's nothing you can do to change them. <laughs> That's funny. I get it. <laughs> no, um, well, you know, my wife. I, I met my wife in the Philippines. Yes, and she's but she's very Catholic, not Calvinist, but um. So if you're that specific, obviously I would go to Catholic church or, or maybe go to Scotland. Right. But uh, otherwise I would say, um, I mean, I, I, my, one of the things I really liked about my wife when I met her was the fact that she had these very, um, traditional values. Yeah. Yeah. Mine too. Mine too. And I've been trying to get them out of her ever since. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, I get it. That's funny. Hayden uh, 75 says, everyone check out the movie Nefarious. It's in a thousand theaters around the U.S. Comes out today. Rackets. If you haven't watched the trailer, look it up. It will start conversations and maybe bring people to God. Faith-based movie. Uh, Marcel Dufour says, during the Battle of the Bulge, German paratroopers had dressed as American soldiers to confuse the Allied forces. But when the fighting started, they changed out of the American uniforms, showing German uniforms. Right. That's correct. Uh, Jim Satala says, how can Steve not acknowledge the two best bases in history of rock geezer Butler or cliff Burton? I'm shocked and outraged. I'm returning my book. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I I'm, I'm recognized geezer Butler was an innovator. In fact, you could say that he invented heavy metal because he wrote the original black Sabbath song with the tritone, but he's, he swiped that tritone off of the, um, the, 
I believe it was off Holtz the Planets. So if you if you want to go back, but however, Geezer Butler was an innovator. I just what you know, I like Black Sabbath, but I don't love it. Same thing with um with uh what was it, Metallica's original basis, who is also awesome, but it's just you know, my biggest influences as a bass player were Steve Harris from Iron Maiden, Getty Lee from Rush, Sting from the police. And uh I admire other bases like um uh I, I admired other bases on second tier, which was the Taylor from Duran Duran, um, Tony Franklin, who's a pre- fretless player with the firm, and uh, one other one um, put it on another tier, John Paul Jones. But I, you know, I, these are these are all influences. But you know, it's like who do you play? Who do you play like? It's it's a, an amalgam. I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. It's it's probably no, alcohol talking. No, you're fine. I just, uh, I know nothing about bass uh, other than bassists never get women. No, that's a joke. Yeah, that's um, right. No, that's true. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's real. Man. Lofty Pixels Baldo says Steve was the original passport bro. Yes, yes. And speaking of passport bros, this actually has nothing to do with it. Guys, the sponsor of the show today is cbdistillery.com. Come look, you know, they have my favorite sleepy gummies, the sleep synergy gummies. Uh, they they sell CBD products, they are high quality CBD products for all sorts of different things. Um, they also have this daytime synergy dropper, which you've heard you've seen me take it a couple times. It's kind of gross, I'm not gonna lie. It tastes like CBD oil, it goes under your tongue, it's a sublingual tincture. And look, tinctures don't taste great. But the benefit of them is the medicine gets to you quickly. Uh, CBD has numerous healing, calming, soothing properties, help you with stress, help you with anxiety, help you with sleep, help you with energy. All of those things can be yours by going to cbdistillery.com using promo code NOSE. The other product that I have tried, and it actually does work fairly well, is uh, the CBD stick that you rub on like a surface level injury. You've got some muscle aches. uh, You've got some, uh, you know, maybe a lifting soreness, stuff like that. You can use the stick. It's it's upstairs in my room because um, I had back pain the other day. I was having Lady Raggett's. Uh, use that on my back pain, and it was fantastic. Um, that is uh, another thing that they have, and you can get all of this. It's CBD. It's legal in every state under the Industrial Hemp Act of 2015, which is a federal act. Very, very cool. And they also do sell Delta 9 THC products as well, only to states in which they are legal, um, but you can get those. Look, go to cbdistillery.com. Use promo code NOSE. Get yourself a discount and try out some alternative products rather than shoving Tylenol and Advil up your ass over and over and over because, you know, those things fuck with your liver and you don't necessarily need these over-the-counter products pushed by big pharmaceutical companies uh, for general, uh, general wellness concerns. Look, maybe you need something heavy if you get particularly injured, but if you've just got some soreness, you need some energy during the day, these are great products to do it from a great company, and they uh, they only put out some of the best stuff that's out there. Again, these CBD gummies, if you have sleep trouble, um, I took one of these, and it was 20 minutes, man. I was barely able to stand with it. I needed to hit the hay. I did it live on Locals. It was great um, because I, I don't, due to my narcolepsy, I don't feel tired. I lay down, I go to sleep right away, but I don't feel tired. This thing put me down quick. Uh, So go check it out. I know a lot of you have trouble sleeping, which is why you watch my show. In fact, don't ever buy those gummies. What am I talking about? Stay here with me forever. Uh, But cbdistillery.com, promo code knows. Make sure you check it out. Big sponsors of the show. Very happy to have them. And finally, Larry Larry says, just bought both Gosney books law learning soon and with that guys we are going to pop over to rumble there's a 20 second outro we are leaving youtube woo, woo, woo. turn on the sirens or whatever the rumble link is in the description or you can go to rumble.com forward slash c forward slash ricada law and it will bring you right to this live stream every single day when we're doing it all right uh thank you if you don't pop over to rumble I will never forgive you, but I will still love you and we'll see you tomorrow. But do follow us over to Rumble for some more enhanced discussions. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in a second. For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, 
Let's get ready to rumble. 